Good morning. Thank you for joining me, Pastor Zach Williams of Flat Creek Baptist Church here in Gainesville, Georgia. Uh, friends, today we are going to continue on in the book of Acts and we're going to be finishing up Acts chapter 20 and getting into chapter 21. Now, 21 is going to be a fascinating chapter and into 22 and all the way through the rest of the book of Acts. We are going to really begin to navigate with the Apostle Paul to Jerusalem and from Jerusalem all the way to the place where he gets to Rome, which is where his heart at this moment of his ministry desires to be. And when we think about Paul's desire to go to Rome, I, I think there are many things uh, that are involved in that calling on his life. But I think that uh, the most important aspect of that call in his life and the reason he desired so much to go there was this one idea that, that at that moment, Rome was the most powerful city on earth. I mean, this was the head of the Roman Empire. This is where the emperor set. This is where government was uh, seated. This is where all the, the laws and rules for the, the empire went out from. And so the apostle Paul had this desire in his heart to go to this city, to go to this place and to reach it with the gospel of the Lord Jesus, knowing that if he reached Rome, he reached the world. And, and so in my heart, you could maybe liken it today to maybe a calling on your life to go to Washington, D.C. You know, the United States of America is the world's superpower of the day. And in Washington is the seat of our president, the seat of our government, the seat of our Supreme Court. And so all laws that influence our culture go out from there. And so maybe you would think of today that a person warning and having this calling on their life to reach Washington, knowing if you reach D.C., you reach the world. And so Paul has this desire in his heart to go there. And as we were talking about uh, the last few times we were together, Paul, he bypasses going to Ephesus and meets with the Ephesian elders on a, a, a beach on his way to Jerusalem. And so he brings the Ephesian elders out. And as we have talked about he gives them kind of what I like to call a farewell or a homecoming message. It's that last time you come by and see the faces of those that you love so much, those you've ministered to, those you've pastored in the past, and just wanting to make sure that they are prepared for the future, prepared for what's coming. And Paul gives them those four points. Remember the past, look forward to the future, stay alert in the present, and keep the main thing the main thing. And the Bible tells us in verse number 36 of chapter number 20 that after Paul said these things, he knelt down and he prayed with them. And I love that uh, because really as you walk through the, the Bible, as you walk through the New Testament, what you will find about the Apostle Paul is that the Apostle Paul was a man of prayer. As a matter of fact, one of the most fascinating studies I've ever done personally is just going through the prayers of the Apostle Paul found throughout the epistles, how he would pray for this church or pray for his friends in this location or pray for a certain uh, endowment of the Holy Spirit to come upon him or, or an understanding to come upon believers. And so here the Apostle Paul, uh, being a man of prayer, is going to kneel down and he's going to pray with these leaders before he leaves them. And, and I would have loved to have been on the beach that day to have heard the prayer of Paul as he is praying over them for the last time, praying for a spiritual zeal, praying for a, a, a understanding of the Lord Jesus Christ, praying for a, a fervor to, to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ, praying for protection, praying that they might remember all the things that he has instructed them on in the past. And so here is Paul. He's on the beach. He's praying with those individuals he loves. And the Bible says there was a great deal of weeping by everyone. I mean, they loved one another. And the Bible says they embraced Paul and they kissed him, grieving most of all over his statement that they would never see his face again. Then they escorted him to the ship. Now, now, friends, 
What you see here in the text is the love between a pastor and his congregation and a love that's reciprocated. You know, it's a beautiful thing when a pastor goes to a church congregation and they love one another. Now, I've heard horror stories of times when pastors have gone to congregations and they haven't gotten along so well. And I'm not talking about the occasional, you know, uh, upset member, the occasional individual, you know, has something to say to the pastor, but they, they get along afterwards. I'm, I'm talking about those nightmares where that, like that old book said, you know, the devil in the second row, there's, there's somebody sitting in the congregation. There's people in the church building that genuinely do not want the pastor there. They despise him and it never works out. And eventually the pastor has to leave and, and there's no connection once they depart. That's a terrible thing, and that's a, that's a horrible thing. I want to encourage uh, all congregations uh, that might be listening under the sound of my voice to love your pastor. Uh, you know, if I could give you one reminder today, your pastor is not a perfect man. In fact, there's only one perfect man who's ever lived, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, don't put your pastor on a pedestal that he can't keep. Don't expect him to, to walk blamelessly. Don't expect him to always live holy. Don't expect him to be sinless. Know that he is a fallen individual and your hope doesn't rest in him. Your hope rest in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not making an excuse for pastors. Don't hear me wrong. I'm not saying that pastors are, are able to just go and do anything they want to do and they shouldn't expect any, uh, any, you know, any criticism or negative feedback in response. But what I'm telling you is, is to love them, love them through their mistakes, love them through their hurts, understand that they're men too, and, and they have families too, and they hurt too. And so you want to come alongside of them and you want to love them and you want to cherish them and you want to, you want, you want to, you know, give, uh, give them uh, every ability to succeed because their success is for your benefit. Now, pastors, I want to also say to you to love your congregation. I mean, love them fiercely, love them with the love of Christ, love them with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your strength, because they are the children of God. They are the, the flock that he's given you and you're to love them and cherish them and embrace them and help them. And so there's this love that we see on the page between Paul and the church at Ephesus. And it's a beautiful thing when a church and a pastor, they love each other. In fact, it's a living testimony to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't you remember what Jesus said? They will know that you are my disciples by the way you love one another. So if you love your pastor and the pastor loves the congregation, this is a, a living testimony of what it means to be a true follower of Christ. And the world will know that you're true followers of Christ by the way you love each other. Paul and the Ephesian elders, they embrace, they weep, they grieve over the fact that they're never going to see each other again. And after this, the Bible says in chapter 21, after we tore ourselves away, friends, it hurt. It hurt Paul to leave them. It's like ripping a Band-Aid off. It, it, it didn't feel good. And I just want to speak to pastors and congregations as we close here today. You know, oftentimes, pastors are called to other locations. And we're called to be men of faith that follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever he leads us, we are to go. And I'm going to tell you, that if a pastor loves his congregation, it's just as hard on him to leave as it is on you to see him go. But you don't have to be enemies. Understand that whatever church your pastor might be going to, they're, they're, they're co-laborers in Christ Jesus. And if your pastor is a good pastor, know that the other congregation is going to be blessed. And so send him on his way with favor and love and grace in your heart. But at the same moment, have enough faith to know if God is really calling him to another destination, God already has his man chosen for us. He's going to take up the mantle, continue the work, and we're going to see God do great and mighty things.